Hi and good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining me as I continue with the exploration of science, looking at heart damage and troponin elevation with the COVID vaccine. This is in preparation for an upcoming webinar. And so if you are watching it before the date, please register for the event, COVID vaccine myocarditis implications. If you're watching after the event has occurred, there should be a link where you would be able to look at it probably broken down into a course format. So look forward to that. There are just some bits of science that are inconvenient where you can't necessarily discuss it openly on mainstream media. So because of that, I'm giving you just the basic science in helping you to understand where I'll be focused on with regards to that presentation. And just to remind you, in case you had not uh, seen this before, this is all to do with a paper that was published in uh, July about sex-specific differences in myocardial injury incidence after COVID-19 mRNA booster vaccination. It's a very, very important paper and has quite significant implications for the population. And that's why I'm focused on it. And I'll be trying to break it down in a little bit more detail and tying it into other pieces of research that could help you to understand more. Here is a quick selection from that paper. And what essentially they did, they took hospital employees and who were having the booster vaccination, and then they measured their cardiac troponin T uh, on day three after vaccination. And they were looking for elevations of this troponin T without evidence of an alternative cause. That's an important point, without evidence of an alternative cause. So all I'm doing today is that I'm helping you to understand when I do the presentation, what am I talking about with regards to troponin T? And for anyone who has been in hospital or has been with a loved one, the troponin blood test, because they're different ones, but troponin T is one of the more sensitive ones, most commonly used to look for heart damage usually checked within a few hours of having the heart symptoms, and it's an essential part of our cardiac diagnostic toolkit, meaning that if someone comes into hospital with chest pain and you're not sure if it's related to heart disease, you would do a troponin test, uh, probably two of them, just to see if there is sustained elevation, which would point to heart damage. People who have elevation often are admitted to hospital. So it's a very, very important test. The basic science of it tells us that this is an example of the myocardium of the heart. And you can see here, I'll see if I can get my pointer, this is heart muscle, and they're interconnected right here. This is one muscle cell, and they're connected across each other into this beautiful meshwork. And each one contracts at the same time with the electrical signal to shorten and therefore pump blood around the body. So this is what it would look like essentially on the surface. And then if you actually looked inside the cell, this is a better description. This is from Wikipedia, a great image. And that uh, this is the disc that connects the heart muscles. This is the midline point so that it has something to contract against. And you can see here that these proteins pull against each other to shorten. And inside these proteins, you can see the troponin I, the troponin C, and the troponin T. So these are very specific for heart muscle not only in heart muscle, but also in skeletal muscle as well, but primarily in heart muscle. And so this is why when it comes to looking for heart damage, it's such an important test because it largely highlights exactly where the damage is occurring. And in the context of a heart attack, you can see here, I've got a nice image here, which would show you a heart. This is the heart. This is a blood vessel here that they've expanded on, and you can see there's a lot of plaque in here. So this blood vessel is blocked, and because it's blocked, this area of the heart gets damaged. 
And because this area of the heart gets damaged, the troponin will rise and we would know whether or not someone was having a heart attack. So it's a very, very fundamental test. And it's part of the reason why it was used in the context of the COVID vaccination to see whether or not there were any elements of damage to the heart. This is another image, again, showing an example here. This would be the healthy heart muscle, nice and pink, um, and they're connected to each other. And this part here is damaged heart muscle. That's like here, this part of the heart. This is after someone, say, had a heart attack and you would have this bigger area here that was damaged. And so this, again, at the time of the damage would have caused a rise in troponin. So it's, a, as I said, an essential toolkit that we use. The relevance that we're focused on with regards to COVID vaccines is probably not so much to do with a heart attack but more to do with myocarditis. And this is an example of the same muscle cells with inflammation. And what can happen is that you have damage to muscles in the heart with myocarditis and leakage of troponin into the bloodstream, which can then be measured. And so this is the fundamental thing that we'll be looking at in regards to the presentation. So I remind you, if you haven't yet registered, you must take a look. We have limited space. Register for this. It's free. Join us. If you have missed the presentation, look out for the link and you'll be able to watch me describing in a little bit more detail what I can't say online at this time because I'm very cautious about censorship. I'll finish with a very simple point. COVID-19 infection can cause cardiac inflammation and it can do damage to the heart. And I do remember early on in the pandemic, one of the reasons for pushing forward with the reason to make sure younger people especially had the vaccine was so that you could reduce the risk of myocarditis. I guess at that time, they weren't aware that the vaccine doesn't necessarily block against infection long term. And so therefore, that risk still remains. But just to highlight the point about it, this is a paper taken from 2020. Elevated troponin in patients with coronavirus disease 2019. This was in June 2020. And essentially, they were looking at patients who were admitted with severe disease and measuring their troponin levels. And what they found was that elevated troponin was frequent in patients with COVID-19 and significantly associated with fatal outcomes. There could be a number of mechanisms, including viral myocarditis, myocardial damage from the cytokine storm, as well as unmasking coronary artery disease. The important point from that paper is that troponin elevation was taken very seriously in the context of severe COVID-19. The question now remains, is it serious in the context of the COVID vaccine? We're talking about 2.8% of, of the cohort had a mild and transient elevation with regards to the vaccine. This was measured against a control group that didn't have it, so it probably wasn't related to the intramuscular injection, which can sometimes cause a rise in troponin. So as I said, these are important questions, and it shouldn't actually be that I am self-censoring about these points, but sadly I am. So join me for the presentation in another uh, week or so, and we'll be able to delve a little bit more into the science and more critically, what are the implications? Have a great evening. Look forward to speaking to you again soon.